the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom Dipowski was a unique experience. It was a really interesting spot. Now we're going to move on. We're only moving about three miles. We're just getting into like this protected creek because the next few days are supposed to be stormy and gross. Where we are right now, there is a half mile dinghy ride to shore to take Morty. So that's really not ideal, especially if we're gonna be having rain and heavy winds. So we're going to a spot where there's gonna be beach access right by us and it's, it's literally right up the river, um, but it's going to be important to hunker down there, and that way we'll have an even better jumping off point when we do decide to move. Okay, once again, we are off. So we got the anchor up. We got out of our narrow, narrow little <laughs> entrance to our creek. We didn't bump bottom because we went at high tide. And uh, yeah, it was actually such a narrow <laughs> entrance and such a shallow entrance that we wouldn't have made it at low tide because the tide is currently five feet above mean low water and at one point we had 4.5 under us so we would have bumped right there so we're gonna anchor still right by the fusky we're gonna anchor in uh, I believe it's called Bull River and we're gonna hunker down there and ride out these next few thunderstorms that are coming so back behind us is a big thunderstorm coming lots of rain it's not like just a little bit of rain here and there it's days of rain that are coming <laughs> Starting to sprinkle just a little. <sighs> really dark, nasty clouds are getting really, really close. So hopefully we make it into the anchorage. I can drop the hook and go inside before it hits. Okay, so we made it. It hasn't rained yet, so we're safe there. And we got 12 feet under us. We're gonna drop the hook in just a second, and then we'll be in. Jerry's been standing on this pot the entire time. Jerry, do you like standing on the pot? Well, the storm has arrived. I'm really glad we are where we are. We're in a very protected area, although that wind is blowing. What is it, Jerry? So I'm just, we're just hungered down and uh, I'm, going, I'm heating up some water for my shower. Okay. Yes. The water heating is with our electric water heater. So we now have the ability to make water that is hot with the flip of a switch. And it's awesome. We're making water hot. We're not making water that is hot. <laughs> yes, we are simply heating water that already exists. Yes. yes. We don't have a water maker. <laughs> no water maker, but a water heater. It runs on 48 volts, so it just hooks straight up into the motor batteries. Right, we're getting tortured here. It's blowing about 40 knots. The crazy thing, it's getting cold. And I looked on the forecast and it's supposed to go down to 32 tonight. Come on fire, warm this boat. Okay, the wind is finally, finally starting to die down. It's 11 o'clock at night. It's just a smidge above freezing out there. It's uh, 34 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Wickedly cold for being in the south in the spring. But tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be super dead calm. Cold, but dead calm. And we're gonna get the anchor up and we're gonna get out of here and make our way towards Beaufort. And I'm really excited for that because I've wanted to see Beaufort, South Carolina 
for a really long time. Well, it's going to be a cold day. It's in the 30s out there, but we are determined to get out of here. We've been in this anchorage for four days now without moving or going outside, and we are just ready to move on. So weather be damned, we're going to suit up, coat up, and make it to Buford. So I got shoes and socks on, two pairs of pants, a coat, a sweater, a long sleeve shirt, and down here somewhere is a short sleeve shirt, and we're gonna make our way. Now, if you didn't know this already, we have synthetic rigging. We don't have steel. And everybody's always asking us, what is the problem with synthetic? Why don't more people have it? Honestly, we think there are way less problems with synthetic than steel. But today we're experiencing the one problem with synthetic rigging. And that is that when it's cold, it goes slack. It actually expands in the cold. So we can't sail today, which is a really big deal because that's what helps us get those extra miles in and those extra knots. So everything we do today is going to be under motor uh, just because our rigging cannot handle a sail today. So if the weather was going to be really cold like this for a long time, we could tighten it and then we'd be fine. We could keep going. But the problem is tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 60s. So if I tighten it for 30 degree temperature and then it goes to the 60s, it's going to shrink back as it warms and it's going to be too tight and it's going to break something. So that's why we're just going to leave it alone, not use the sails today, and then after that we can be sailing again. So we're going to go around the boat and show you guys all the rigging that's super loose. We're going to start off with this guy. This is our chest high lifeline. This guy's normally chest high. It's like up here and super tight all the way down here. It's just sagging like crazy. I can basically jump rope with our back stays. So you know how your rigging's supposed to be cap shrouds the tightest, forward lowers the next tight, aft lowers the lo loosest, and if you've got check stays, it's supposed to be tight as well. And the very tightest stay of all, your head stay. Silence is really, really nice. The fact that we can't put up sail to give us extra speed means that we're gonna have to fire up the generator. Because the generator runs the battery charger, which gives us an extra 20 amps, which is about a knot and a half to two knots. So we're gonna need that. Because we wanna get there. I'm trying to really get to Beaufort today. So we have to get there before 6 p.m. because that's when the tide changes, and we're not getting there after six. And then the sun sets at seven, so. We have to. Hello. 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 Hello, Jenny. producing 20 amps, the solar panels are producing 15 amps, and 
we're running at 60, which means that we're only drawing about 20 amps. and a sail cover on our deck and that's because it is directly over our hatch which is directly over the v-berth which is where we sleep so in the morning the sun shines down and the birds get up as soon as that sun rises so having that weighted covering over our hatch is really helpful for getting like an extra hour or so of sleep we've done our first 10 miles and i have to say it's Really interesting because we've only just crossed the border from Georgia to South Carolina but already everything looks different you wouldn't expect that but here we are at the marshy the miles and miles of marsh and brown and yellow grasses are gone now we have civilization lots of marinas and houses and green grass and lots of vegetation tall vegetation so it's just, it's kind of fascinating, and this is the beauty of the ICW. Alright, that's the last bit of Hilton Head. This is the northern side of it. We're going to cross the river. It's 3.8 miles to cross the river, and then we go up another river into Buford. just rounded the green buoy and this is important because now we're turning to go up the Port Royal River so now we have the current and the wind at our backs giving us a push so it's looking pretty good 25 miles to get to Beaufort was a really tall order especially since our batteries weren't fully charged but it's looking like we might actually make it the whole way the batteries have just enough power to just Get there. But the good part is we're going to be there a couple days so that gives solar panels time to charge but we don't need to listen to the generator because oh my god it is so loud. If any of you are thinking of going electric and you're contemplating should I get generator or more solar panels? More solar. It works all day long and you never have to listen to the thing. It. We went 26 miles with no sails up and that's just ridiculous all because of the lithium batteries and the generator and the sun. The, we had solar power coming in, we had the generator running. Between the two we had about 35 amps coming in and then we were only motoring at about 60 amps for almost the whole way until we almost got here <laughs> and we had 8 amps left. And I thought, you know, if we need to like thrust or do anything, we can't because we don't have any power if we're running just off the generator. So with that, I throttled back really far and started letting it charge. Now we have to let the generator run for about an hour because the sun's going down and we need to run, you know, our fridge and you know, stuff like that. But the important thing we need is our anchor light. 
and I honestly don't think we have enough power in the batteries to run our anchor light all night. Like it, we are as far as we could go. We're gonna go get some Southern comfort food. There's a barbecue place that's right by here and everything in this town seems to be, seems to close really early. But we're gonna be eating on Bay Street, which is kind of a historic street in Beaufort and it is the place to be. How does it feel to be back in civilization after spending like, I don't know, four days holed up in some tiny little creek with nothing? Yeah, it feels really good to like walk. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that Beaufort is one of our favorite stops so far along the ICW. And unfortunately, now it's just covered in balls. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.